Hello. Uh, it was a sadness uh, to hear that the figure of Ram Das, uh, Akka Richard Alpert, he changed his name in 1967-68 when he um, came across a guru in, um, in uh, India. Uh, Ram Das uh, died peacefully in his sleep on December the 22nd, 2019 in Maui. And it is a great loss, but at the same time, he is, it's kind of passing of an era, I think, right from the 1960s. Um, so I thought I would do a small video here uh, on Ram Das, look at some of his horoscope to see if he lived up to his potentials. And of course he did, uh, never letting many people down, uh, but actually elevating them, pursuing a kind of line of knowledge and inquiry into the human condition. He had a waking up experience in 1968-69, as I said before, and changed his personality. His, um, he changed his clothes, he changed his name, and came back to America in the, in the late 60s, um, still forwarding this uh, uh, ever-present um, flow of Eastern philosophy into the Western mind. Uh, the great Alan Watts, of course, was uh, uh, started this really in the 1950s, perhaps even in the 1940s with Zen Buddhism. And uh, Gopi Krishna uh, published his great book, The Kundalini, The Evolutionary Energy in Man, in around about 1967 to 68. And so this for there was a lot of movement in terms of meditation, in terms of other techniques. He came back from India, a yogi, dressed uh, in, in yogi and uh, had a long beard. And it was to the surprise of many, not surprising when we see this Uranus conjunction sun up here in Aries, particularly in the 10th house. In order to become an individual, in order to become who one innately is, uh, uh, this is the forward motion the uh, uh, sorry the forward impetus in life uh, shown by the sun is to create a center a unique center of identity to take what we have to bring it in hand under one kingdom as it were and try to utilize this try to make something of what we've been given and this in turn shows us who we are as an individual the sun shows us are basically our path to our unique contribution in life and has to do with a consciousness and understanding and being the center of our own uh, identity in order to issue forth, if you like, those um, gifts, potentialities that have been given to us. In many ways, the sun represents the light of awareness or consciousness that we have as a passing being. Life comes into us, it flows through, there's various uh, uh, influences and uh, 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 upon our identities and so on, through our culture, through our parents. But eventually the sun is that, what are we going to make of it? Uh, I suppose the sun represents the gift of life in many ways, which is to see life, to experience it, to move through it as part of it. And then, of course, it passes away. So the sun in Aries here is typical uh, kind of pioneer person. He's in the 10th. And so this will manifest through his career. In other words, his profession in the world, which was to become a teacher and, as an example, an experimental example in many ways. And we see this sun Uranus here in the 10th, showing a rather, uh, a person living on the outside. Almost a, Uranus represents an evolutionary current, uh, a rebellious spirit which breaks down the seed, the usual norms of behavior. And so, uh, because the person has a vision about what's coming next. Uh, Sun Uranus is an experimenter with life, never sitting on one's laurels. And uh, I feel that this is a, a, a testament to what Ram Dass was bringing in, a, a, a universal knowledge, um, a, a mental awareness that there is the individual self, but there's a greater self beyond. Uranus's vision of a greater self as, a, as the creative source of life. Uh, existing in a, um, a kind of timeless existence. Uh, Uranus is known as the sky or heaven. 
So he's, he represents this new knowledge. And whenever it's conjunction sun, the person becomes a vehicle for this new knowledge or new way of being. Uh, in Aries, he would have done this with a rather a lot of panache and straightforwardness. His conversion uh, to, uh, to being a guru and to meditation and so on came really between the period of 1968 and 61. Um, before that, he had experimented with uh, psychedelics with Dr. Tim Leary. And uh, this was interesting, too, because uh, we see this Uranus, the Awakener, conjunction his, na his natal Neptune there in the third house. A truly mental awakening, the third house represents a, a kind of education uh, processes by way, whereby we learn and orient. It's our reading material. It's our earlier education. It's um, this, this, this whole, whole um, panoply of education and understanding and finding tools for understanding. Neptune is in here, and so he found uh, certainly an enlightenment tool through uh, psychedelics, psilocybin, mushrooms, mescaline. I think he experimented with most things, but particularly with LSD. Their famous uh, experimental project at Millbrook, which was a place that um, uh, a lot of them uh, retreated to after being kicked out of Harvard University in order to experiment with psychedelic material. He moved in there with Tim Leary and a lot of others. And they undertook a lot of experiments uh, in that place. Uranus conjunction Neptune is a, uh, can be seen as a, as a waking up to psychedelic experience or experiences beyond the known, beyond the ego. And he was predestined to do this with this Neptune in the third. Also, Neptune was opposed Chiron in, at, at this point. Neptune would have been here uh, around about uh, 1617 Scorpio, and it would have been transiting Chiron. It's, it's an interesting thing about Chiron because I, in studying the um, horoscopes of gurus, various ones, we often see that their awakening up to uh, awakening up experiences involves Chiron, either Chiron by solar arc or something is transiting it. Chiron seems to take us through our personal suffering. Uh, the incarnation of Saturn, if you like, and then the, uh, Chiron is between Saturn and Uranus. Uranus, in this sense, can represent the mind of God or a, a greater understanding of oneself in the whole system. So it connects us to a greater whole. Neptune connects us to a greater whole and um, uh, Pluto, in this sense, um, uh, gives us a uh, an initiation into things in which we um, s stop being one personality and are transformed into something else. So Neptune uh, across Chiron, Chiron is the woundedness of being alive. Often comes out through the idea of unfairness or injustice in the world, and we can see it placed in the 11th house. Um, Ramdas set up various organizations, the Saver Foundation, he, the Living and Dying Center, uh, and uh, I believe it was or the Hanuman Foundation, Hanuman uh, after a, a Hindu god. And uh, we can see this Chiron here trying to relieve the suffering by, by the setting up of various charities and groups. And uh, of course, him talking and writing and everything else in order to bring money uh, into his projects. In rather like uh, uh, Orson Welles in many ways, having to pay for his own films. But nevertheless, uh, we can see this Chiron well placed in the 11th as a force for good. But when Neptune, as I say, was, was opposed to it around about uh, the 60s, we could see that he was seeing or relativizing his own suffering as an individual, moving beyond the psychological realms into the transpersonal realms. And we can start to see, you know, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto often ha ha having an effect which has awakened us up to a totally different uh, uh, field of reality beyond our own individual uniqueness. So Ramdas, I was privileged, I think, in it was either late 1988 or um, uh, early 19, perhaps 91, 92, I can't remember now, but I did see Ram Dass uh, give a talk when he came over here uh, at that time and he held a talk in, I remember it was Bath, 
And I went to see him and he came out on stage with a big picture of Neem Karoli Baba, his guru. And he sat down, he talked for an hour and a half and then gave about 40 minutes questions uh, for, the, for the other section. He talked without notes. He, um, he had a presence on stage, talked about his guru, realized that it looked a bit um, um, strange in the, in the West to bring out um, this person. But Neem Karoli Baba was the person that uh, brought him up, gave him the awakening experience that he had or needed uh, in, in, uh, in, in India. Apparently a miracle saint, many people experience miracles. He could read minds. He just knew you and loved you, knew you and loved you. Uh, various psychic uh, uh, psychic experiences that Ram Dass eventually convinced him that he'd found somebody genuine. And this occurred as Pluto, transiting Pluto, was going across Ram Dass's fourth house. From 1968 to 71 was a massive change in his being and his personality. Um, this waking up experience is his mother had died uh, too during this uh, phase. And we can see the Pluto God of death bringing that forward, that symbol forward. But Pluto isn't necessarily about the death of people so much as something going out of your own life. In many ways, he he had up until then constantly been taking one kind of hallucinogenic or another to try and get that transcendental experience. But it was here he found the disciplines of, uh, of, ergo, of yoga and meditation. So in other words, he stopped relying upon the tool of uh, psychedelic um, uh, uh, experience and then started to undertake real study in spiritual practices. And this was all under the tutelage of Neem Karoli Baba, who constantly produced these uh, miracles. And um, as a result, eventually in 1960, end of 1969, 70, he came back to America with all these new clothes. We can get a taste here of this plutonic working through the the underworld being taken into an unknown terrain where unknown to you your old personality is shifting and it's going to be renewed when it comes back out and so the fourth house often represents the foundation stones of our personality it's often hidden underneath where we anchor ourselves but the fourth house is often an unknown uh, uh, not, not particularly known but i see it as a very spiritual house it's the house where the self is centered. Uh, that position here moves through the center of the earth. And it's, it may begin that, that our identity is linked to family, very fourth house. Or fourth house could be linked to nationalism, patriotism of our home. Um, it's, it's also the ancestors in our own unique family. But depending on how, how far our identity uh, or, or wants to seek a relationship with the divine, we have to give up these identities of the fourth house. Do we belong to a family, a clan, a tribe, a particular religion? Uh, no. Well, we do. But there are further gradations of initiation into the realm of identity. And this is where Ram does his Pluto uh, the transiting Pluto came across here and his identity was totally changed. He didn't realize, of course, how, how deeply this was to go over the um, uh, remaining years of his life. But this was the beginning of it. He was no longer simply the son of somebody. He was no longer the, a professor at Harvard. He was no longer anything, in fact, apart from this person that had come back with a new experience to give to others. Uh, quite a prolific period for him in the 1970s, 1971, saw his famous book come out, Be Here Now, which was fundamentally the humanistic idea of being in the moment. Um, what was going on now for you? Be in the now. Uh, a very prominent and important facet of uh, the practice of mindfulness. Also, the Gurdjieffian idea of just simply remembering yourself not being on automatic, not being asleep in one's actions. And so this uh, Be Here Now came out in 1971. There were other books to follow. But what I wanted to trace here was this 
Pluto conjunction the fourth, which gives us a, a deeper dynamic of what it means underneath. Some transformation of identity is taking place, and it often means the loss of an old one. This Pluto here, conjunction Jupiter, a very, uh, a, a very powerful impulse in order to find out what is in the unknown. And it may involve, as it did, as all spiritual journeys do, a series of mini deaths of the personality. Um, they go through funeral by funeral, but then something else appears upon which we can rely. This Mars in Leo shows a, a person actually which liked to be on stage a bit, um, a bit pushy. Uh, I did not know him personally, but that Mars square uh, Mercury there is a very, very active mind and can get a little bit uptight and uh, perhaps cutting in his earlier years when the personality was working itself through. Mercury Mars is a person that thinks quickly, that knows a lot, or needs to push. What are you going to do about this? And so on. So he's uh, often very quick to give advice and uh, uh, was probably cantankerous from time to time. Uh, and we, as I say, I don't know this personally, but with an airy spirit, uh, airy Uranus is often a, a sense, well, just get on with it. Uh, most people were saying that uh, Ramdas was always a, a generation ahead of his generation, showing them where things were going to go. And of course, in 1997, he had a stroke. Uh, interesting thing about that was that Uranus was bang on this Mercury at the same time, February 1997. Now, I don't say that uh, just because it shows it, but because that somehow the events that occur with our transits the events aren't the thing, but when they're consonant like this, Uranus waking up, the Mercury being the mind and being severely affected, he, uh, Ramdas was forced to do away, as I say, with his usually discursive rational mind. I think he had a pride, perhaps, I think he uh, owned this later on when he realized that part of his personality was still identified with the communicator with the teacher, with, with, with the love of words and the use of his own mind. And it was this that Ramdas had to let go in a, a most difficult phase of his life, a coming to terms with it. The film that was made about him in a fierce grace um, is, is very interesting as we see him battling against his own uh, depression uh, brought on by this uh, uh, tremendously powerful and disruptive stroke. Finally, what I would like to say here is we see this Saturn opposed to uh, uh, Pluto. This is in some way a destroyer, um, a destroyer of something, not necessarily in a bad way, uh, but this is the ego, the bounds of the known that we produce in our individual as an individual self. And Pluto is the god of death or the god of regeneration. Wherever he m moves around, he takes things out of the system which aren't needed anymore and, and, gets, and gets rid of them. But this often involves change or transformation of a deeper kind. So uh, whenever you see an opposition like this, Saturn is the boundaries of the ego. Uh, Pluto is the destruction of form. We see a very powerful element in, in uh, 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 Ram Das to know about the mysteries of death, I think. He may have always been fascinated or, um, about them, uh, particularly in nursing his father, for example, which he did for a number of years into old age and death. He set up various institutes uh, 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 for living, uh, for um, conscious dying. Even then, he was ahead of his time. Finally, uh, we can see that Ram Dass has succumbed to the Pluto conjunction Saturn transit at on the uh, month and uh, date of his death. Um, in a way, this is a proud announcement by the heavens that um, he was yet again in tune with his astral identity. He was in tune with the uh, passing uh, currents and patterns of his own life. And finally, Pluto comes along and gives him relief or takes him through yet another transformational journey.
Which brings us to the end of this presentation. I didn't want to make it that deep, but I did want to pass on my condolences for all of those um, uh, uh, people that are uh, mourning at this time. I'm a little sad, uh, but somehow this Pluto Saturn uh, suggests that it was time that yet again Ramdas is in tune, if you like, with various levels of being and the passing off or shuffling off of the mortar coil for him was uh, uh, was going to be a, a an, an interesting and uh, uh, perhaps even a fortuitous time for him because he did suffer a lot in his last 20 years of his life. One thing I learned about Das about astrology, interestingly enough, I'm just going to come out of that. Uh, one of the interesting thing I learned um, about astrology was a comment that uh, Ram Das made during one of his many, many lectures. He said that uh, identification goes in different different strands and we have different levels of it. And one of those levels he called the astral identity linked to our horoscope side. He recognized that astrology had a validity. It had a, 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 an important point to, one could attach oneself up to, in a way, the cosmic pattern that we've been given. And so it kind of places astrology in a particular place that it can lead you towards a, a sense of your transpersonal astral identity, what you've been given by the patterns and processes of the universe, Although, in the end, the spiritual journey leads us beyond that to have no identity at all, uh, which I believe is his last film, something about, I think it's called Becoming Nobody, <laughs> the end of the spiritual journey. It doesn't mean to say one is a nobody because of the, all of the stuff that he's left behind, his kindness, his heart, his uh, mental agility, his humour, and all of that goes with the figure of Ram Dass. Um, but nevertheless, uh, anyway, I wish him a, uh, uh, I wish him blessings on his new journey. Thank you. <laughs>